Right, what's up everyone? Continuing with the MTR theme, switching over to MTR and Android. There's been a huge update in the MTR and Android world. It's version 2.2.0, uh, something like that. It's also known as the April 2024 update. Uh, ends in 606 or something of that kind of ilk uh, by the time you actually get this. But it's a massive, massive update. And I'm going to go through the release notes first, and then I'm going to show you around. Right, so just checking out the release notes is a few big ticket items. The first one of which is the home screen refresh. I'll show you that in a second, but it's eerily similar to uh, Teams Rooms on Windows these days. Uh, it's been a long time kind of coming as a transition to make sure that Teams on Windows and Teams Rooms on Android look as similar as possible. This version looks almost identical with a few subtle differences. I'll show you that in the tour. The next up, of course, big obvious thing is the QR code for joining meetings, casting your screen, that sort of thing. Uh, HDMI local content ingest uh, has been upgraded to uh, use up to 4K resolution. Uh, some GIB feedback support that's available on Windows, as I said little question mark down in the corner to be able to give feedback and of course some performance improvements now just using the uh, the brand new remote ui support i did it i showed you in my last video um, you can see i've got actually the touch console down here and the front of room display and as I mentioned in that first release note right up there is the home screen refresh. I think you'll find that the home screen is as close to MTR on Windows as is humanly possible. First thing uh, that you'll notice is the calendar has flipped. So uh, previously on MTR on Android, the calendar was over on the left-hand side of the display, at least on the, on the touch console. On the front room display, the calendar was on the right and it's been on the right since the beginning. I've got touchscreen controls uh, enabled so you can actually see the, uh, the the controls here next to the calendar on the front of room display. But on the touch console, again, the calendar is flipped over, but you have the six buttons. That kind of iconic um, uh, list of buttons is available from there. A few of the buttons are slightly different, things like accessibility and, and, and bits and pieces. Of course, on Teams on Android, you get the whiteboard support, which you don't get on uh, Teams on Windows, at least not a standard Teams on Windows. Maybe the Surface Hub running Teams on Windows will have a, a start a whiteboard button. But um, yeah, other than that, it's almost identical. Now, if I just enlarge the uh, touch console, there you go. Uh, you can kind of see it a bit more. Again, calendar bar. The other thing about the calendar bar is, or the calendar box, is that it's persistent. Doesn't matter whether you have any meetings upcoming or not, the calendar will always show up on the touch console to show you the availability of the room. You can see I've got, you know, I'm available all day, but here is my schedule for tomorrow. So I can actually see a little peek of what's going on uh, tomorrow. This is a win this is an Android only thing. Windows doesn't have that. The other thing I really like on this MTR on Android is the ability to actually open up the details of a meeting. So this is a meeting, it's just a recurring meeting I actually got in my diary for tomorrow for this room. Now if I click the little arrow over here, I can actually open up the meeting details. I can see the subject if I've enabled the subject, of course, the date and time. Uh, the actual type of meeting, it's a Microsoft Teams meeting, who the organizer is with a little picture if it's available. But the other thing that's really cool is the ability to join. So I wouldn't necessarily want to join a meeting I've got scheduled for tomorrow, now, maybe in my own lab, but you probably wouldn't want to join a meeting that early. But let's just say you <clears throat> happen to be walking by a meeting room and actually see that the uh, room is available a little bit early, why not go ahead and join that meeting early if you're in the meeting room early? So open up the meeting details an hour before and then press join. If the join button isn't actually in the big tile, um, then you know you can actually open up the details and get it that early. 
Next in the release notes up there is the QR code. I showed you that in my video on uh, MTR Windows version 5. Um, no point showing you that again. It's the exact same feature. You scan it with your phone. You can go ahead and cast. Uh, join a meeting you've already got scheduled or start a meet now from your phone and actually drive everything from there. Local HDMI ingest, can't really show you that. Give feedback, that's a little question mark down here. So the ability to actually give feedback or report a problem from the UI. Of course, as I mentioned before, the feedback and report a problem will go into the Pro Management Portal if you've enabled that feature to give your, your users the ability to actually report a problem and you'll be able to get at that uh, detail again in the Pro Management Portal. If I go over to the more button, you've got, of course got the full screen of those six icons and the volume down the bottom. And of course I can get at the device settings and then from within there I can get at the Teams admin settings. The other things to show you are within a meeting. Again, very similar to the Teams on Windows but of some subtle differences. Uh, right here you've actually got the meeting ID and passcode actually displayed uh, right here so you can get at those details really quickly you can get at the full set of details if you open up the more button and then open up meeting info it gives you everything there including the dial-in details and the conference id to be able to give to somebody if you wanted to verbally or via text or something like that subtle difference between teams on windows and android is uh, on teams on windows the actual um, view switcher is all the way over on the left but here, if I open up the view switcher, I can switch from gallery mode. I can toggle the chat. Uh, I can switch over to front row. I'm just going to leave chat enabled. A um, few other little subtle differences. Uh, on Teams on Android, you've actually got a combined emojis or reactions uh, screen and your raised hand pane. Teams on Windows, you actually get um, the uh, a dedicated button for raise your hand and another dedicated button for the reactions. And then, as I, as I said, in the uh, view switcher, I've actually got a chat toggle. Teams on Windows actually gives you a dedicated speech bubble, kind of chat toggle to be able to toggle on and off the actual uh, uh, chat on the right-hand side of the front of room display. Um, I guess over time, Microsoft could add those little subtle differences to make it even more close to Teams on Windows. But for right now, I think uh, it's about as close as you're gonna get. Uh, the share tray, of course, you've got the uh, connected device, start a whiteboard, and if you've got a content camera such as the Logi Scribe plugged in, you'll be able to, the ability to actually start your content camera. Opening up more again, you've got the ability to lock the meeting, turn on captions, uh, report an issue from within a meeting. And then lastly, if I open up the camera icon here, you can actually see I've got the, the uh, camera preview here. If I had multiple cameras plugged in, I can choose between them. And then this is something that's available on Android that isn't available on Windows, is the ability to turn on automatic framing. And that's because I've got a smart camera in the room. So if I toggle that on, then I've got the ability to choose between room, active speaker, or composite view. Um, with Teams on Windows, all I have is the ability to en enable and disable IntelliFrame, which is, of course, Microsoft's cloud IntelliFrame that turns a dumb camera into what appears to be a smart camera by giving you the same kind of composite view that might be available on your smarter camera. So... Um, at some point, I'd love to see on Teams on, on Windows that big open space that I showed you in the last video, uh, the ability to toggle on IntelliFrame and then maybe even toggling on uh, automatic framing. Or if I've got a smart camera plugged in, replace the IntelliFrame um, with the automatic framing, for instance, and then let you choose between the framing modes that are offered by the smart camera plugged into your Teams on Windows experience. And maybe even... PTZ control. Uh, I'd love to see that come. I get asked for that all the time as well. Right, and that's it. That's the entire tour. If this kind of stuff is up your street, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Would greatly appreciate it. If this video has been useful, hit the like button and share with your friends. Nothing left to say except for thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.